Lesson number eight is all about CSS for these checkboxes right here. We want to take it from looking like this to looking like this right here. So we can do that in a bunch of different ways, but what we're going to do is actually remove the default checkboxes from visibility, but then use their functionality and update a visual thing instead. So we're going to do this in two stages. First of all, I'm going to add some HTML to these right here, these checkboxes, and then secondly, we'll spend the rest of our time in CSS. Now, what I'm going to do is use a sibling selector to say whenever this is checked, I then want you to toggle on or off a kind of custom checkbox we're going to create. Now, we will call that switch right here. It'll just be a div. And inside here, we'll have a span. In this case, this will say sound off. And then we'll also have a sound on. And in between these two, we'll have another div with a class of thumb. Now, we're not going to interact with these at all. So we're going to actually put pointer events to none here. So you can't even click on them or anything like that. So it's only visual. In this case, that's why it doesn't matter if it's a div. Normally, if you like use a div and you want it to be clickable, you, that should really be a button or you know whatever. So in this case, though, this is just basically like a UI layer on top that you're not going to actually interact with. You're actually clicking on the input. And this is just going to update to visually show you what's going on. So let's do the same thing down here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this down this way. And this will just say motion on or off. And then one more time. And this will just say down here, squared and rounded. So I think that's what I had over here. Let's just double check. Yeah, squared and rounded. Okay, so now we've got these showing right here. The checkbox itself isn't showing. This thumb isn't yet. But we'll do all that in the CSS. So next, let's go ahead and open up our CSS file. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and we've been a little lax in how we've styled this stuff because we've tried to focus on functionality. I actually do need to add one other thing here. If I go to the settings and grab my H2 inside of here, then I actually want to set this custom site settings to our custom color. So I can just set the color here to the var of custom color. And now whatever my custom color is, it will update this as well. So if I come down here, I have like an option two, option one. Let's see, that should work. Oh, you know what? This needs to be a settings wrapper because I think that's outside the settings itself. So this should be settings wrapper, the H2. Now it actually picks up that color. So I meant to do that earlier, just never got around to it. Way back when, when we made these checkboxes to start with, we added them inside of a switch wrapper class. We've yet to do anything with that, but you might remember that I want this to be position absolute and fill the entire switch wrapper class, which means the switch wrapper essentially just needs to be position of relative. So let's close down that JavaScript file, come in here. We're gonna grab that switch wrapper class and I'm going to add position of relative. So now when we have the position absolute checkbox inside of that, you'll see that it basically fills that entire section. So the other thing we want to do is actually hide the input from the UI. And we're going to hide this label as well, just to make it a little bit cleaner since we were adding these custom ones right here. However, with screen readers, it will read toggle motion, basically true checked or not checked or whatever. So let's go ahead and come over here. And here I want to grab the type of checkbox. I want to do a few things here. First of all, I want to position absolute this like we've been talking about to make it fill the entire section. Then I can do that with an inset property, which is the same as saying top, right, left, and bottom, telling it to fill the entire section. I also want to make sure that I have a cursor of pointer here so that when I come over here, it looks like I'm toggling, you know, can actually toggle it one way or the other. And then finally, eventually I'm going to add an opacity of zero. If I do that right now, it's going to make it disappear. But just to show you here, let's, uh, let's come inside the switch wrapper and do like background color of red. So this entire section is being filled by this checkbox itself. So over here, if I click, it's actually actually clicking the checkbox. Now, the way the UI works in Chrome, at least, it won't stretch this checkbox. It always keeps it at an aspect ratio of one to one, but it is actually filling this entire area. So anywhere in this, will actually check it one way or the other, just to kind of see what it's doing. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. Just know that that's well, maybe let's keep it on just so you can see it, but know that it is behind everything else. And maybe now that I think about it, let's keep this background color on as well. All right, so let's come now below here and I wanna grab my switch uh, label. Now if I jump over to my HTML, that's what a class I wanna add on all of these. So class, we're gonna call this switch label. We're gonna use this to essentially hide the label from the UI as well. So all three of these will have switch label. And inside here, we're gonna do something very similar. I'm gonna say position of absolute. I'll say inset of zero, and I'll say opacity of zero eventually. So we'll hide that from the UI. And now anywhere inside here, we'll click on this. Now, for whatever reason, when you do this, now it goes over the checkbox just because it's second in the DOM. So you can handle this in a couple different ways. So we can say pointer events of none, which means they can't actually click on it, which now I'm clicking on the checkbox below. The other thing I can do is also just do a cursor of pointer here as well. The reason you actually move this to position absolute 
is for whatever reason, at least for me on iOS, if you don't have this label clickable, it doesn't handle this checkbox well. So maybe I'm just doing something wrong, but that's at least what I found to work. So because these are the exact same, I can actually grab this and just duplicate this right here. So I can say if it's either checkbox or the switch label, do this and it will basically hide it below. So now I've got this UI, which is the UI I want, but the functionality is the checkbox below. So let's come back over here and look at what else we've got. So we've got a switch. We've also got these two spans. We've got the thumb. So let's go to the final site. What I want is these to be set side by side. So like flex children. And then inside here, we're going to have this little fake checkbox that we're going to use the before or after pseudo element for the thumb itself. So let's come over here. And the next thing I want to do is grab my switch. Like I said, I want, we want this to be display a flex. So we're going to use one of our spacing items here, space. We're going to use 2x small. And then we're going to line items center. This makes sure that they're vertically aligned one way or the other. And let's come back over here so we can actually see what's going on. Next, I want to justify content space evenly. So now I've got three things, this, the checkbox, which is in the middle, and then the other span over this way. We're going to add a padding around everything, and this will be space of extra small. And then I am going to add a border here. This will be two pixels, solid, var, custom color. So it'll pick up our custom color, which means now I can also get rid of this nasty red, and you should be able to see the border that we want on that. Now, because I want it to be rounded, if we want rounded, so like you can see the rest of the UI is rounded right now, I'm going to add a border radius. And you might remember the way we set that up is we pointed everything to our radius thing. So that would either be rounded full or rounded medium. And then we let the UI setting determine basically if it should be really rounded or just zero for the rounded, uh, the border radius. And then finally, like I mentioned, we actually want pointer events to none here so that nothing gets clicked on. So nothing in this switch div is being clicked at all. This label, the check itself isn't actually being checked. It's just ch clicking the checkbox below uh, or the, the label below. Now, the last thing I want to do is set the background color here, and this will be my var of background. This just ensures that if it's basically over this uh, background thing that you can still see it. So it won't just be transparent. It'll actually have that same white background color or whatever the background color happens to be. Next, I want to come in here and grab my switch. And inside the switch, we have what are called thumbs. All right, so if I jump back over here to the HTML, it's this right here we're grabbing. So the little fake checkbox now, I want to style that. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm going to use CSS variables again and just set a size declaration so that one little change will basically change what this checkbox looks like. Because this can sh shrink or flex, and I don't want it to ever shrink, I always want it to take up its full width that it needs, I also need to set a flex shrink to zero here. And I'll try to remember to show you how that works if you don't do that. Now, inside the thumb, we're going to have a before pseudo element, which will be the little toggle. So this needs to be position of relative to make sure that it doesn't break outside of its parent container of the thumb. Now, for the width, I want to set this to my var of size. This is that locally scoped variable here. And so we can actually see what's going on. Let's go ahead and add a background color. And here, once again, I'm going to use my custom color just so we can see it used more throughout. Now, I need to set a height. And so that that one size variable controls everything, let's calculate the height. So I'll use the calc function and pass it my variable of size divided by two. So there it is right there. This width is that three rim, and this is 1.5 rim, which is half of uh, the, the variable size. Next, let's actually grab this border radius property and drop this down here as well. And now let's set up our little thumb. So I'll come in here and I'm going to grab, let's just keep it with switch and thumb. We could obviously not do this switch as well, just to make it not as specific. Maybe you want to do that, but I'm going to grab the before pseudo element. And you always need content on these, so I'm going to set the content as nothing because I don't need anything here. But the position will be absolute because, again, I want this to be position absolute within its parent container of thumb. Now let's go ahead and set the width and the height. And here I'm going to do something very similar to right here. I want it to be a perfect square or a perfect circle, but I do want it to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to set this like that, and that way we can kind of be a little bit smaller than the actual parent itself. To make sure we can see it, let's set the background color here to our var of background. And now there it is right there. So it's at the top left, which is default for position absolute. So let's actually position this where we want it. We want it to be down 50%. That brings the top of it to the middle here. We'll have to actually transform it back up where we want it to go. So let's go ahead and do that too. So we'll say transform, translate. In this case, I want it to be zero left and right and negative 50% up and down like that. Okay, so now it's in the exact middle. And now I want to set it off from the left a certain amount. So once again, I'm going to actually calculate that so that as I change the value of the size, I don't have to also come down here and change this. So if I calculate it, I'm going to actually take the size. And here I'm going to divide by 12. 
Now, without getting too fancy into the math, basically I'm thinking about the size of this thumb itself and the entire size here and dividing it by 12 should set it off basically the exact same amount as the, the bottom and the top as well. I think I've still got that border radius on my clipboard, so let's add that as well. So now it's also receiving that same rounding effect. And now that I think about it, I think this and this both need to be full. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now they actually look full. So they're fully rounded. Now this one looked fully rounded just because it was so small. So that radius of, you know, half a rem actually rounded the entire thing, but that's not always going to be the case. And finally, I want to add a transition on here. Because when we check that one way or the other, I want it to have that kind of snapping effect, assuming that we want the actual movement to be turned on. This will be on the transform property because that's how we're going to animate this. We'll do 0.02 seconds. And I've actually got a variable for easing called ease elastic up top declared on the root. Let's see if I can find it. Right here that has a cubic bezier curve. So that's all we're going to do is apply that. And that way it has that same snapping effect that we see throughout the entire site. Okay, so now how do we actually handle clicking this over one way or the other? Okay, well, that's where we're going to actually use the checked status of the checkbox. Because remember, that's still controlling the functionality. So I'm going to grab the type of checkbox and say that whenever it's checked, what I want to do is grab its general sibling of switch, like that. And then I want to grab the thumb inside of this and grab the before and transform it. So we're going to say transform like this, and we'll translate. And in this case, again, I'm going to use a calculation so that I don't have to think about handling uh, the differences when I change one variable up top here, just showing you kind of the power of CSS variables. So we can take the variable of size and we can subtract it from the variable of size divided by two. All right, so it's gonna actually do this first and then subtract these two things. So that will be its left movement. And then up top, we wanna make sure we always keep it at 50%. That way it doesn't move down like you just saw it do a second ago. So now when I check this, it's going to move it over this way, check it this way. And since I'm turning the motion on and off, you see that it you know, turns the motion on and off. But here, you can see how it's swapping it either way based on this ease elastic right here. So because all this is calculated, it's really easy to basically swap it over this way. Basically, it's size divided by half minus its own size. All right, so that moves it exactly over where I want it after that little snapping effect one way or the other. Now there is one more thing we need to think about, and that is we need to know when we focused on it. So if I come up here right now, if I come over here and I focus on this, you don't have any visible you know, notion that you focused on it. What I can do, however, is come in here and say, when I grab the focus visible, so whenever I've tabbed to that, I wanna grab the switch and then just the thumb itself. So not the little white thing, but the entire section here, and I wanna add something to it. So here, what I want is a box shadow. And I'm going to do this in kind of a ringed stage. So we're going to go zero left and right, zero up and down, zero blur. We'll grab three pixels, var, and background. And then I'll copy it one more time because you can actually ring a box shadows like this. And here we've got six pixels. And I want to set this to my custom color, custom color. So now if I come in here and I tab to it, you see I actually get some indication. And I'm checking it. Now, again, it looks like this is the checkbox even though it's not the checkbox. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And I've turned off the sound in this video just so you don't have to hear it clicking all the time, just so you know. The other thing I might wanna do then is on the thumb itself, I might wanna also add that same kind of bouncing effect that we had uh, right here. So I'm gonna grab this and add it on the thumb, except in this case, I don't want it on the transform, I want it on the box shadow. So now if I come in here and I you know, jump to these with my tab key, you get all that nice clicky feel unless I toggle motion off, in which case you don't get it at all. Okay, so that's all there is to setting up your own custom checkboxes that look like toggle switches back and forth. Again, the functionality is the actual checkbox, which means you get all the keyboard accessibility, all the, you know, the great accessibility for screen readers and other things like that. However, you get all the coolness of an actual UI that you like to look at. Now, let me show you what this sounds like if I were to turn on my accessibility settings. I can do that in Mac with Command and Function and F5. I don't think you're actually going to hear this, but you can see right here what I'm doing. All right, so if I come in here, you see it says toggle round, checked, checkbox. So it actually says it's checked. If I check it, it says unchecked, toggle round, checkbox. Now, I don't think you're actually hearing that audio because I didn't think to capture that when I created this video, but you can read what it's saying right here, which means you can listen to me instead of trying to decipher between me and my computer voice. Well, hopefully that makes sense, kind of why we did what we did. The actual label itself, toggle round, is what's being read off. Whether it's checked or not is being read off to screen readers, but for sighted viewers of your site, they're actually seeing if it's squared or rounded or motion off or motion on. So we kind of get the best of both worlds with our own custom thing, but using the actual browser's checkbox by default as far as the functionality. 
All right, in the next video, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to focus on these down here, these radio groups. All right, I'll see you in lesson number nine.